welcome to Virtual Church Media in His Presence TV broadcast where all things are possible. We are so excited today to talk with you about the ministry of angels. I'm David and this is my lovely wife, Joanna. We are the, the Herabedians and we can't wait to share with you today. And it's going to be a fun, fun broadcast as God literally activates in your life afresh and releases angels to minister to you, to your family. Angels minister to you, for you, and with you. And we're going to look at these things today. And I'm going to ask my lovely wife to lead us into the presence of God and release the presence of God where you're at to harmonize and frequentize and draw you into the presence so we have That's right. heaven's thoughts and heaven's syncopation That's in the right. earth where angels ascend and descend upon the ladders like they did with Jacob's ladder in the Old Testament. They ascend because prayers go up and they go get provision and they bring provision down. Whatever you need, we're going to find out the amazing things that angels have been doing in your life and also what God wants to do to send them and how you can attract God's angelic activity in the name of Jesus. Be blessed today. Joanna. That's right. So let's go into a little bit of prayer. I'm playing the piano in case you're wondering where that music is coming from and why I'm looking down. We've got a piano right here underneath. So Lord, we just thank you. We step into your presence right now, God. And we bless your name, Lord. We pray for revelations today. In Jesus' name. We release your anointing to break every yoke and every chain in the name of Jesus. And we release your angels. We command them to go forth in the homes right now who are watching today. To do deliverance. To do healing, Lord God. To bring freedom and salvation. The message of salvation. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray over the stress of this week, Lord. We pray for your presence to wash it away. And that they would just feel your rain right now, raining on their soul. Thank you, Lord, for an open heaven at their house right now. In Jesus' name, we praise you, God. We bless your name, Lord God. We thank you for your love. And I pray for your love, Lord God, to just fall right now. To heal the hurt, to heal the pain, to wash away fear and doubt. In Jesus' name. And we give to you this broadcast, Lord. And we thank you now for your anointing upon David as he preaches the word and teaches. In Jesus' name. David? Oh, that was beautiful. Can you feel the presence of God? Just push yes. your table away, relax. We're only going to be about another 20 or so minutes together, but what God's going to do in the next 20 minutes is going to be amazing. He always confirms His Word that is preached when it's a God-breathed moment with signs and wonders following. He always confirms it with divine thought and inspiration and manifestation and a release of angelic activity. In the outer courts with God, we have the faith realm where the word is preached and God confirms his word. In the inner courts, there's the anointing realm where his spirit begins to flow and the gifts of the spirit begin to operate. And in the holy of holies where God's presence is fully manifest in our lives, we have the ministry of angels. Angels will minister to us like they did for Jesus in Matthew 4, 11, when he was finished with the temptation of the enemy on a 40-day fast, the devil left him for a season and angels came to minister to him. Angels will minister for us. They'll go out and do things in our behalf. And God will send his angels ahead of you like he did for the Israelites. And then also angels minister with us like they did in the book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 where the angel fell before or the John fell before the angel to worship and the angel said don't do it I am 
your fellow servant. So angels minister to us when we need it. They minister for us, and they'll also minister with us. We're going to learn how to cooperate with angels, biblically, with the Word, with the Spirit, and with the glory realm of God. And as we move into this teaching, just to get the biblical basis, let's look at Hebrews 1.14. Are they, angels, not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Right there, they minister for you. And also, do not forget to entertain strangers, Hebrews 13.2. For by doing so, by entertaining strangers, showing kindness to strangers, some have unwittingly entertained angels. And so there's so many different things that happen with angel activity, and it's been happening, and you may not even have known it, but we're going to highlight some things today, and the Holy Spirit's going to reveal, He's going to unveil some things as we move to the next slide. The word angel is used nearly 300 times in the Bible. Angels are superhuman or heavenly beings who serve as God's messengers. Both the Hebrew word malach and the Greek word angelos indicate that these beings also act decisively in fulfilling God's will in the earth. These two terms, either the Old Testament Hebrew malach or the New Testament uh, word angelos, these can apply to either angelic supernatural beings sent by God, or they can apply to human beings that are emissaries of God. Somebody said, oh, they, it was like an angel was sent into my life. Some of the scriptures are 1 Kings 19.2, Haggai 1.13, and also Luke 7.24. And the next slide we're going to look at highlights the different types of manifestations of angels. Angels can manifest as supernatural beings like they did in Isaiah 6 in the likeness of men as they do in Hebrews 13 2 and Judges in the Old Testament chapter 13 verses 2 and also 26 and also they can be invisible ministers as the angel that went before them in the book of Exodus with the children of Israel and Moses the angel of the Lord went before them and ministered for them. And as we uh, just think about the variety of angels, we're going to look at 10 different types of angels. But before we do that, just remember they're supernatural beings, number one. Number two, they minister in the likeness of men. And often, and the most common is, invisible ministers sent forth to those that will inherit salvation. So let's look at 10 different kinds of angels. Number one, there's messenger angels like Gabriel. Number two, there's warring or warfaring angels like Michael who commands, you know, the host of heaven at the direction of the great King Jesus Christ. Number three, there's worship angels like Lucifer who was over worship in heaven. The tabrets and pipes went through his body the way God created him. And of course, he fell from heaven and took a third of the angels with him. Number four, there's healing angels like at the pool of Bethesda where the angel would stir the water and the first person who would get into the water would instantly be healed. And then five, there's protection angels, Psalms 91. He will command his angels regarding you to pick you up in their hands. They have hands, not just wings. It's different varieties of angels. Some of them look like men. Some of them have six wings like the seraphims in Isaiah 6 that went around the throne of grace. And they, 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 they sang, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty for the whole earth is full of the glory. With two, they covered their eyes, their face. With two wings, they covered their body. And with two wings, they did fly. There's so many varieties of angels. We're just highlighting a few. There's also angels of provision where they'll go before you and pick up provision and bring you provision supernaturally like Elijah was visited by an angel that brought a cake of bread and some water and he ran on that supernatural angel food for 40 days. There's prosperity angels that will go up and they'll go ahead of you and set up divine appointments and you'll, you'll think it's your own charisma or luck or your business experience when in reality it was a prosperity angel sent by God in your behalf because he loves you. And there's also writing angels that will come and they'll speak in your ear and you'll 
get a thought, inspired thought. It's really the thought of the Lord and the Lord has sent an angel and you'll have this ability to write. I'm not talking about automatic writing. I'm talking about inspired thought that comes as you're writing. I remember I was at a, a computer one day and I was helping a friend of mine out who had a child custody case and it was absolutely an impossible situation absolutely an irreversible situation and there was nothing I could do he'd lost all of his rights and when I was at the typewriter I did not know what to do but as I prayed all of a sudden inspired thought came to me and in one sentence what came out on the, the computer stunned me because it turned the whole case around 180 degrees and the whole motion that I wrote was one page and that one sentence that was inspired thought by a writing angel, I believe, turned the whole case around. The judge said, I have never heard this legal argument before. He appointed counsel and interpreter. The next thing you know, the entire family was reconciled and a whole household. So the result of that word from heaven by a writing angel in the legal arena brought family restoration, reconciliation between a father and a son, between the, the grandparents, and it was a, an impossible situation, but God, and he can do it for you today. So that's number eight is writing angels. Number nine are heralding angels. They'll, they'll herald a message. And also number 10, angels of new ideas and witty inventions. So those are just 10 different kinds of angels. And my wife has an angel of deliverance story that she wants to share, and I'm excited to hear it. Yes. Well, it was uh, many years ago, and I didn't believe that uh, you could get your prayer language. And I thought that people who did have their prayer language were whacked, where they were weird. And I didn't want anything to do with that. I wanted nothing. I thought they were demonized. And so God is funny because one day I was praying, I'm like, Lord, I want to, I want somebody that has a word of knowledge to pray for me that doesn't know me. And so I went to the church service and the pastor said, you know, I feel there's some of you here that need extra prayer and I'm going to extend the prayer time. The rest of the, everyone's uh, able to go and those who want prayer can stay. So I stayed and uh, I went up for prayer and the woman said, how can I pray for you? And I said, well, I just have some pain in my heart from some childhood things that I want healing from. So she said, okay. So she started praying and then someone else came. And then another person came and they laid hands on me. And another person came and another person came. And I had seven people that surrounded me and they were praying in this language that I didn't know. And the, it was like heaven opened and the glory of God came and filled my soul and he pulled out that darkness that I was feeling in my heart and I got delivered and I opened my eyes and I could see God's glory. Now, I had never seen anything like that before. So this was all new to me. And as I was looking at the people that were praying for me, I saw seven angels and each one of them was had their hand on the shoulder of the person praying for me. And the glory of God filled me and that night, I got my prayer language. And I didn't know what it was at first, and I thought something was wrong with me. And a friend that God had put in my life at that time said, you got your prayer language, Joanna. And we began to study the book of 1 Corinthians 13 about the spiritual gifts. But then I had a friend who called me, and he said, what was going on? I was praying for you on my knees, and I said, God moved me, and I saw seven angels. And each one was standing behind each person praying for me. It was amazing. So we pray that for you as well, that God sends his angels to surround you right now, to touch you and heal you and deliver you out of a situation that you're in, in the name of Jesus. David? Hey man, what a wonderful testimony. And Joanna, can I just ask, after that happened, how did your relationship with the Lord increase? Did you get catapult forward and accelerate in your oh, yeah. relationship with the Lord? Oh yeah, because I was raised Lutheran and you know, with, we, it's a conservative church and you know it's great upbringing and but we didn't you know I didn't know anything about those things and that was a spiritual awakening when I got baptized in the presence and the love of God and he filled my being filled my soul it wasn't just you know head knowledge it was heart knowledge it changed my life 
And God wants to do that for you. He wants to change your life today. He wants to fill you with his presence. Amen. I just want to pray. I'm feeling a, a, a flow of the Holy Spirit. And instead of going back to the PowerPoint and teaching, just want to release because God always confirms his word with signs and wonders following. If you just raise your hands up to the Lord, just say, Lord, I want what Joanna talked about in whatever form it comes from the Lord Jesus Christ, commander of the Lord's host. If you don't know Jesus today and you sense the presence of God, something's happening to you that you've never felt before, it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's the ministry of angels ministering to you, ministering for you and working with you to accomplish heaven's plans in the earth that it might be done in earth, in your earthen vessel. I'm seeing a healing flow begin right now in the lower right-hand side of a person's back. You've had a, uh, it's, it's like a sciatica, but it's more than that. There's bruising that I'm seeing in the spirit. And God's now, if you just raise your hand up as an act of faith and allow God's angels that he's sending in response to the prayers of others in your behalf, in response to proclamation of the word right now. There it goes. Just allow him to minister to you. Joanna, are you receiving word as well? I am. I'm seeing someone that um, is having a sick kidney. Their kidney is not well. So we release that healing into your kidney right now. Lift up your Jesus. hands and just receive that. God, Lord, thank you for touching them right now and touching that kidney. In the name of Jesus, giving them a creative miracle in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, people would have to go to the house of God to receive a touch from the name of God. But in the New Testament, God has given us His name to go out and do His work, preaching and proclaiming His gospel. And these signs will follow those that believe in His name. In the Old Testament pattern, people went to the temple or the house of God to call on the name of God. But in the New Testament pattern, it's reversed and God has given us his name and we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and we carry his name, his authority, his power, his provision. And when we go forth and we proclaim his name over people, instead of people coming to the house of God, God is sending out the multiple houses, the temples to the people to proclaim the name of Jesus over their lives and healings happen. Baptism in the Holy Spirit happens. If you've never received your prayer language, to pray in other tongues, to receive the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just raise your hands up. Here's the illustration I'm seeing right now. If you were in a pool of fresh, clean water and you were thirsty and you were just in that water, all you'd have to do is open your mouth and he'll fill it. Just open your mouth and drink in, come taste and see that the Lord is good. He wants you to experience him not just head knowledge, but an experience, relationship and intimacy into me. You see, he wants you to see into him and he wants you to open up and allow him to see in you, not because he doesn't know what's already there, but when we get honest, when we confess our faults one to another and pray for one another, we're healed. When we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. There's a cleansing us from all unrighteousness as we walk in the light. First John 1, 5 through 8, as we walk in the light, as he is in the light, he's the light of the world. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Though your sins are as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. Thank you, Father, for the ministry of angels right now flowing into the lives of the people. There's a, a dental miracle taking place right now. There's been pain. You're seeing it literally go away right now. You're feeling it just start to dissipate. Gingivitis, God is doing things in the area of mouth, mandible, TMJ. I'm seeing God is adjusting things. Some, one of the ways the gifts of the Spirit operates when you're ministering, you'll actually feel that area of your body uh, either have a numbness on it or you'll, you'll feel something in that area and you'll know God's healed when it goes away after you've spoken it. In the name yes, of Jesus, Lord. I come Thank against you, Jesus. the headaches. 
night torments right. in the name of Jesus. Joanna, you picking up yeah. something? Yeah, I pray right now for women struggling with uterine issues in the name of Jesus. We release your fire to burn any cancer cells there right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for washing them clean. I break trauma off of them and in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just release your glory right now, Lord. Your glory in those dark places, Father God. In Jesus' name, we thank you right now for your anointing that's breaking every yoke right now in the name of Jesus. David? Amen. I'm picking up carpal tunnel syndrome. Just, there it goes. God is just healing it. Again, the gifts of the Spirit will sometimes operate you'll feel it on your body in that area. And it'll be, uh, you know, you'll cooperate with the Holy Spirit, but it's, sometimes it's, it's almost a little involuntary. It, it involuntarily starts, but then you, you cooperate with the Lord. And as you, there it goes. You just feel that thing go. In Jesus' name, I'm feeling a, yeah, I'm feeling a, specifically for somebody right in this area, yeah. in the, the thumb and area right yes. here. And so, there goes in Jesus name I just break off rheumatoid yes, arthritis that's right. I we, command circulation to flow in and through the body right. also uh, yes. there's been a person with tremendous responsibilities I mean just an overwhelming burden break those burdens right now in Jesus yeah, name yeah he said cast cast your burden upon me because I care for you, Jesus says, and he cares for you. You say, what, if, I'm not, if I don't do it, nobody will do it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here's, here's what he would have you to do today, I'm hearing in the Spirit. Cast the burdens at his feet. What's your responsibility? He'll give back to you. What's not your responsibility? He'll assign somebody else to. You're not God. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Holy Ghost Jr. Cast the cares on Him. It's a trinity. It's not a quartet. And He is well able. That's what His angels are sent to go do, to minister to those people, to minister for those people, and to minister with those people. Joanna also has a word. Yeah, just to tag along to that right now, I break off a Martha spirit of works where you've been like Martha, you're making sandwiches for Jesus and you're maybe making sandwiches he didn't order. So I just give you permission to release that identity right now and ask for the identity of Christ to be at his feet like Mary. Mary worshiped at his feet. Mary laid down at his feet and she rested at his feet as she basked in his presence. So I give you permission right now and I break off the labels in the name of Jesus that you've been carrying for a long time and that false identity. We just cover that in the blood right now, the blood of Christ, and that you would now begin to move in the identity of Jesus as he created you to be, to soak in his presence, to be in his love. In Jesus' name, David. The ministry of angels is flowing right now. You know, there's a transference of angels from one generation to another, a transference of angels. We rarely hear anybody talk about it. You know, in, in, in full gospel circles where the presence of God and miracles happen more commonly, we hear about spirits of inheritance like generational curses and how a person picked up a gambling spirit from their father or mother or a spirit of addiction or affliction or torments or spirit of infirmity. And we have very little difficulty believing that there's a, a transference of demons through the generational curse from generation to generation. But did you know that there's also a transference of angels from one generation to another? And two thirds of the angels did not fall. That means there's two good angels for every one bad angel and light is greater than darkness. Are you ready to receive your inheritance of the ministry of angels transferred from the generations up that are assigned to you that have been waiting on the sidelines saying, coach, put me in the game. They're ready and able. And so right now, as we close out, we wanna release. Joanna and I are gonna pray together. Yes. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just raise your hands up toward the monitor on your phone or your iPad or computer or television screen. If you're one of those watching on satellite in 120 million homes on five continents that God is releasing yes. to you right now. In Jesus name. Yes, he's releasing restoration to you right now. Redeeming back all that the canker worm has stolen and eaten. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, I release unto you your rightful inheritance. I just see people getting back title deeds in the Spirit. I don't fully understand what that means. Lord, we just release the title deeds to that which has been stolen. And now we declare a divine reversal yes, Lord. and a restoration of the title deeds yes, God. that are there by the ministry That's right. and transference of the blessing. We declare the generational blessing released right now yes, Lord. on the lives of those that are hearing. Yes. Just say, I receive it, Jesus, I from you. I receive it, Jesus. Just accept it because it's God's will that That's you right. receive what he's done in heaven for you and your generations have done That's right. for him and he wants to release it unto you That's right. as a generational blessing. You're blessed and you're not cursed. You're the head mm -hmm. and not the tail. You're the first and you're not the last. You walk in the light, you don't walk in the darkness. You're under grace, not under the law. Jesus has redeemed you from the curse. That's right. I'm David, this is my wife, Joanna. That's right. And we're wishing you today the ministry of angels. Yes. And we also want to invite you to our monthly service if you're local in Southern California. We have our next service. It's going to be May 15, and we have a special guest, Dr. Gershom Sakala. He's going to be ministering with us, and we're going to be ministering the ministry of angels and the Lord. And we expect God to do healings and signs and wonders and miracles. So we encourage you to come May 15th at the River o 47 church you can go to our website that you see on the screen at virtualchurchmedia.com and you can look up all the information there right david yes and we are going to have the ministry of angels and the services when people uh, get called out of wheelchairs by uh, gershom sakala a minister from zambia and they don't get out sometimes literally the angels will grab them by the ankles and push them out god bless you richly in his presence where all things are possible.